Bishop Sheen says this, almost everyone today wants a religion, but everyone wants a religion that does not cost too much. That is why Christianity has been watered down to suit the modern man. That ties right into St. Pius X. That's why I picked that reading. St. Pius X talked about uh, modernism, and that's what modernism is all about. It's bringing the worldly view into the church. And I think about these guys, just a quick note, these guys that say they're cardinals and say the church has been wrong for 2,000 years on homosexuality. Uh, the Book of Romans, no, that, they just don't have it right. Think that one through. I mean, this guy, this cardinal, with all due respect, is telling him the church has been wrong for 2,000 years, and I'm going to straighten out the church right now because I've got a better idea. I'm like Ford. That kind of guy needs a lot of prayer. That cardinal needs prayer. But I'd also say if he doesn't go along with what the church's perennial teachings are, step down. Do us a favor because you're hurting the body of Christ by putting out error. And that's the word error, I said, because saying that homosexuality is in line with the gospel is error. It's false. All right, let's get to that faithful Catholics plead with Pope Francis not to remove Bishop Strickland. Thank you for listening to Virgin Most Powerful Radio, home of the Bishop Strickland Hour, sharing the gospel with clarity and charity. Now, they wrote this letter to the nuncio. This is the guy who represents the Holy See and Pope Francis for the United States. I met him. Now, no one knows the character and ministry of Bishop Joseph Strickland like the Catholic faithful in his diocese. This is a letter to the Holy Father. He's been, he has been in our home faithfully preaching the gospel to us. He baptizes our children, corrects us when necessary, and he buries our dead for as long as we can remember. Now, this letter says that I'm offered in fidelity to Christ. This is the people saying, to fidelity to Christ the church on behalf of the Catholic faithful of the Diocese of Tyler, we respectfully address the matter consists with our rights and ob obedience to our obligations under the canon law of the Catholic Church, particularly the canon that we always refer to, canon 208 to 223, which states, read this, the Christian faithful are free to make known to their pastors of the church their needs, especially spiritual ones, and their desires, and have a right, even at times, the duty to manifest to the sacred pastors their opinions on matters which pertain to the good of the church and to make their opinions known to the rest of the Christian faithful. That's Canon 212. We always quote that. Now, that says it all for us. When we go to talk to a bishop, a cardinal, or even the Holy Father, we're telling him what we think the challenge is or the problem is, and we want to plead with him, you're the one who can stop this. And that's what we quote. And so we have a right to do that. Some people say, you can't criticize the Pope. Hey, criticize me if it means helping me be, do my job better and be, do God's will better. All right, so here's the purpose of the letter. We wish to raise our grave concern with the recent apostolic visitation of Bishop Joseph Strickland in the Diocese of Tyler by papal representatives. <coughs> there are two grounds for our concern. Really, first, no special circumstances exist in the di Diocese of Tyler whether spiritual or administrative, that warrant an apostolic visitation. In other words, go to Chicago. Go all over to a diocese where there's all kinds of problems. Why go to a diocese that's running well? That's the question. Second, the visit to our diocese without such special circumstances, when public and, and demonstrably grave circumstances of, in the using right term, heterodoxy, false teaching, and moral failures exist in other unvisited dioceses worldwide raises the legitimate questions about the justice and charity of the process, as well as the potentially given rise to scandal among the faithful. So what they're saying is you're, you're knocking on the wrong door. Here the, the houses are all burning, and what do you do? You put the water on the house that's not burning. That's what the church is doing with this investigation. The existence and context of this letter are entirely unknown to Bishop Joseph Strickland or any other clerics within our or without the diocese. He likely would not approve of such an action by the faithful. I know he would not approve of it. But you know what? It's a free country. 
He doesn't need to be, he doesn't want anybody defending him, but I'm going to. <laughs> when someone does the right thing, we should point it out. But our concerns are only secondary related to Bishop Strickland and the Diocese of Tyler. This communication concerns our superior obligation to truth, justice, and charity, and our love for the Catholic faith. That's what Bishop Strickland taught these people to be concerned about. Truth, justice, charity, love for the Catholic faith. End of story. Yeah. No one knows the character and ministry of Joseph Strickland like the Catholic faithful of his diocese. That makes sense. You live there. I've never been there. Our diocese is small, and Bishop Strickland has served as our bishop for well over a decade, ministering as a priest in our homes, our diocese before that. In fact, he was raised in East Texas. That's correct. I think it was Colfax City. Yep. He has been in our homes, faithfully preaching the gospel and baptized our children, corrected us when necessary. Good job. Buried our dead for as long as we can remember. And this is the key. In all respects, he is a faithful bishop and a son of the Holy Mother, the Church. Kind of like what John Paul II said to Bishop Sheen two months before he died in St. Patrick, Patrick's Cathedral. You have written well and you have spoken well. You are a loyal son of the Church. John Paul II said that to Bishop Sheen. And look at the persecution he got. Yep. So we express our filial love for the Holy Father. In other words, we got respect for the vigor of Christ. We should. And respect for the visitors assigned to conduct the recent canonical visit. And we make no claim at all the facts surrounding the recent apostolic visit. However, we possess relevant information regarding our bishop and the functioning of our diocese. Yeah, you think? Talk to the people, baby. We humbly submit that it is responsible to conclude that the knowledge of the Catholic faith in the diocese regarding the bishop and the spiritual and administrative functioning of the diocese is in many respects greater than our outside visitors with a transcendent investigation. The mission is extremely short. So yeah, he says, you know, you're going to come for two days, do your investigation, and we've been here for years. Who do you think knows more? I, I, yeah, you think? Rhetorical question. For this reason, we request that in the interest of justice and truth, great weight be given to the widespread support and opinion of the faithful of the Diocese of Tyler, who have more reason to know Bishop Strickland than perhaps anyone else. And I would encourage you on the 1st and 2nd of September to come to Diocese of Tyler, which I am going to be. I'm going to be the, uh, the Master of Ceremonies for any Defending the Faith conference. He's our keynote speaker at this conference. And I love it because he's going to be proclaiming a keynote address proclaiming the apostolic faith with clarity and boldness. Now, the letter is short, a little bit more. It says, It is well known that canonical visitations are conducted by papal representatives with a transcendent mission of a short duration to investigate special circumstances in the diocese and to submit a report to the Holy See. My comment, every area that they look in, financial, vocations, sexual abuse, A-plus for Bishop Strickland. Okay. They don't, and so while no doubt specific complaints or allegations triggered the apostolic visitation to the Diocese of Tyler, I'll tell you what triggered it, him speaking on the apostolic teachings of the church and the perennial teachings of the church. Let's be honest. The man's yeah, a fearless. We who know the diocese and the bishop well, however, assert that no special circumstances in our diocese exist warranting an apostolic visitation. As I said in the letter, it says, the diocese is spiritually healthy. There's no heterodoxy, no mishandling of sexual abuse cases, no internal corruption, no public moral failures by bishop or clergy. That's a novelty in today's church. And here, for decades, Bishop Strickland's preaching and public statements have affirmed and defended the deposit of faith. Well said. Found that the canonical books of sacred scripture, this is what he always says on the radio with me every week, Sacred tradition and the indefectibility preserved by the ordinary and extraordinary magisterium of the Catholic Church. This is widely known and appreciated in our diocese. He says, even when Bishop Strickland perceived it his duty to oppose error publicly, he always does with charity. He always does that. I see him do it every week on the radio with me here on Virgin Most Powerful. He distinguishes between the persons or the office and the error. 
This is to be expected <coughs> from a successor of the apostle who are commissioned to teach with the authority of Jesus Christ. You see, he realizes he can't change anything. He has no authority. Jesus Christ teaches something. It's, an in, it's, done, it's done. So if objections have been raised to Bishop Strickland, very rarely opposition to the actions of teachings of clergy members or even members of the hierarchy, you know, like Father James Martin, yeah, then criticism itself is not an automatic or sufficient basis for canonical action. Fraternal correction needs to be brought back in the Catholic Church today. That's what Strickland is doing. Fraternally, whether it's the Pope, the bishops, cardinals, priests, I want to be corrected if I'm wrong. Stop lowering the bar and saying that, oh, we can't be critical of each other. When you're wrong, you're wrong, man. So as St. Thomas Aquinas makes clear, fraternal correction is a work of mercy and may be publicly necessary when it's the only our surest way to protect the common good. I'll give you an example. He criticized a cardinal who said that homosexuality should be legit in the Catholic Church. Well, that could affect the, the general public in a very bad way because someone could say, well, the cardinal said it's okay. But no, Strickland says, you know what? For the betterment of the common good, you think I like it, but I'm going to have to do it. Big cardinal, you're wrong. You've got to go back to what the perennial teachings of the church are. And I call you as a way of loving you with the truth. Now, it is believed that statements by Bishop Strickland have been rash. People say that. Against the rule of prudence, justice requires that specific statements be subject to rigorous and transparent scrutiny of truth. Given that statements intended as an exercise of the work of mercy are only against the rule of prudence when they are formed without sufficient certitude. Believe me, he's... He, he prays before he speaks. I can tell on my radio shows. We're going to be out there in Tyler, Texas on the second, first and second of September for the Defending the Faith Conference. Uh, I'd love to have you come out. Go to vmpr.org and you can register for that conference. It's a two-day conference. I know it's short notice, but it's worth going to this conference. You'll meet wonderful Catholics and uh I mean, if you're within driving distance in Texas, go for it. I'm flying out. Uh, I'm going to be there for a couple of days because I, uh, I think it's important that we speak the truth and defend the faith. Okay. Finally, he says, if, if this letter, if this exists, administrative shortcomings are correctable unless they rise to the level of demonstrable corruption. So don't take our bishop away is what they're saying. The visit to the diocese without sp special circumstances warranting a canonical visit while some dioceses are publicly known to have administrative problems, some bishops make heretical public statements without such a visit, appears unjust, and gives rise to scandal. Let's just be honest. Look at Phoenix right now, the new guy out there promoting homosexuality or Chicago, same problems. Why aren't they going and doing investigations on these crazy dioceses? And why go out to a diocese, a little diocese is doing their duty, I'll give you one example. They got 21 seminarians for 50,000 Catholics in their diocese. You do that ratio, in my diocese of L.A. where I live, we'd have 2,500 seminarians. And when we only have 160, if that. You see, Strickland's doing a great job in the diocese. Now, neither the diocese of Tyler nor its bishop are without imperfections. They acknowledge that and weaknesses. Nonetheless, it is a healthy diocese, and Strickland is an orthodox pastoral bishop with worldwide Catholics. Such a shepherd is due to the grave face crisis that we're facing. So these are undeniable, undeniable and numerous scandals, moral fail, failures among the clergy. This is not the case in the Diocese of Tyler. Check this out. Weekly mass attendance has dropped a big time around the country, but not in Tyler. You know, we have millions of Catholics leaving. The Tyler, the diocese is growing. Okay, so, okay, I get it. You go and knock off these people who are growing. We can't, we can't stop this. You're baptizing too many babies. Too many people are coming into the church. Come on, just knock it off. No, this reality cannot help raise serious questions about the justice of the recent apostolic visitation to Tyler. Worse, it could lead to spiritual evil of scandal. Well, I think it leads to scandal because it's like I said, the analogy is a 
you got a row of houses uh, that are on fire and you go to put the water out on the one that's not burning. It makes no sense. Here's the conclusion of this letter. Your Excellency, now he's talking with the nuncio for the United States, for the, for the Holy See. We are addressing this letter to you because you are the Holy Father's personal and official representative to the Church of the United States. We respectfully request two things of you. First, we request that you take the steps necessary to communicate the depth of our concern of the Catholic faith in the Diocese of Tyler to the Holy Father. Second, we request that you communicate to the Holy Father our filial appeal that we will not be left without a local shepherd who has taken so seriously his appeal to be a shepherd with the smell of the sheep. We humbly request your blessing and assure you of our prayers and our filial devotion to the vigor of Christ and our fidelity to the whole deposit of faith indefectibly preserved by the ordinary and extraordinary magisterium of the church. That letter was well written to really communicate to the Holy See what we as lay people in the Diocese of Tyler see. In some sense, I get to hear him every week here on VMPR and interview him, and everything that he said, I can attest. It's all true about Bishop Strickland. But I, I really think, in my, in my mind, that the reason he has the investigation going on is because of corruption in the Vatican. They don't want to hear from a bishop like Strickland because he's calling them to fidelity to the church.